Building on one of the most popular gaming headsets, today Logitech is announcing the new Pro X2 Wireless with brand new super rigid and lightweight graphene drivers that have never before been used in a gaming headset. Logitech is aiming for the ultimate esports focused audio experience. So how does it perform for the $250 price point? Well, let's dive in and check it out. Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys. Now with the Pro X2 wireless, Logitech really has taken what worked very well with the previous version of this headset and just expanded on it a little bit. Those brand new graphene drivers, Bluetooth connectivity, and a few little design tweaks make it a really interesting headset for esports focused gamers. And priced at $250, that is $20 more than the old list price of the outgoing model, so really there isn't a very big price increase here either. Moving into the design, the Pro X2 wireless features a very similar design to the old headset with a few key upgrades. One big change is that the ear cups will now swivel 90 degrees, and so in addition to laying the ear cups flat when the headset is removed, this also enables a better fit on a wider variety of head shapes for the best sound and feel possible. And as far as connectivity, in addition to the Logitech Lightspeed Wireless, there is also now Bluetooth. Unfortunately, it's not simultaneous, so there is a button down here you can press to swap between those so you can swap between the light speed and the Bluetooth connection, but you can't listen to them both at the exact same time. Additionally, the Pro X2 wireless also has a 3.5 millimeter port, which is great. It just expands the you know usability of this headset into some other fields as well. And this is something that I was disappointed to see from Razer with the recent Black Shark V2 Pro redesign that they released is that they removed a 3.5 millimeter port. So happy to see that on the Logitech headset. All of the controls are located on the left ear cup. From top to bottom, there are controls for power, a volume dial, a mic mute button, USB-C charging port, a Bluetooth button, and a slot for the removable boom mic. And that brings us straight into comfort, and really Logitech hasn't made a whole lot of changes here, which is a good thing. You know, it's a simple designed headset, which also means that the comfort is also very simple and pretty good on here as well. And like we mentioned, one of the main upgrades here is that the ear cuffs will now swivel 90 degrees. So that's nice for laying them down flat, like once you take the headset off, but also enables a better fit for a wider variety of head shapes. And one other thing here to note is that the Pro X2 wireless comes with two different styles of ear pads. There are, both of them are memory foam at their core, but they're wrapped in different materials. One of which is a leatherette, and the other is this soft velour fabric, and they provide very different sounds. The leatherette wrapped material will block out a lot of background noise, which also kind of helps to keep a lot of the low frequencies in your ear cups. So it's a little bit bigger and fuller, a little bit boomier sounding, whereas the softer velour ear pads they allow a little bit more airflow and breathability. They don't get as warm, but that also changes the sound profile quite a bit, letting some of those lower frequencies get out and also doesn't knock out quite as much background noise. And we'll dive into a little bit more about how those sound, but definitely something to note here. It's not just a replacement ear pad. They're completely different material, completely changes the sound of this headset. And without a doubt, one of the biggest features of this headset are those new graphene drivers. Logitech is making a pretty big deal about this because it's something that's never been done in a gaming headset before. That's pretty rare to see graphene drivers in headphones, let alone a gaming headset at the $250 price point. And the main appeal of this material is that it is extremely lightweight, but also very rigid. So it's kind of like, uh, they described it as kind of like, you know, carbon fiber is to the car market. You know, this super lightweight material that's also still very strong. This is a similar thing for the headphone and headset market. And that just means that the drivers can move very quickly without distorting because they're lightweight and so rigid. Other materials that are used in drivers are prone to warping when they are, you know, moving, which is how the driver actually reproduces sound and pushes that into your ear. It's moving and pushing sound waves. Any more rigid driver is able to get better clarity because it is not warping and distorting as much as a weaker driver driver that is kind of moving and distorting. So, you know, what does that actually mean moving into how this headset sounds? I mean, it sounds pretty darn good. And as we just mentioned, the sound is different between those two different ear pads. Like, 
really, really different. And what surprised me was that Logitech didn't really talk about this very much in the press briefing. You know, they walked through all the features, spent a ton of time talking about the graphene drivers because that's, you know, the big thing, the big new technology push with this headset, but they didn't really mention the difference that these different ear pads make. And maybe that's something that's already known with the Logitech headsets, um, but it was something that really surprised me when I was testing these out. To me, it's a like completely different sound. Like the Velour ear pads almost make it sound more like an open back uh, style headset because you do get so much more airflow and breathability through this soft cloth fabric. For me, you know, stock out of the box, you get the leatherette on here, and it was pretty bass heavy. And I just kind of thought, you know, that's what I had to live with. You know, the EQ profile that I ended up building on here had, with the leatherette ear pads, I had the lowest frequencies reduced by about seven decibels, uh, which is pretty significant reduction there from, you know, the stock flat EQ sound signature. And in contrast to that, when I had these Velour ear pads on there, I ended up boosting that same, you know, that same slider up to plus four to try to get them to a similar state of where I liked them to be for a lot of listening to music and gaming. So, you know, due to these big changes in EQ between the two different ear pads, you know, evaluating this headset really comes down to imaging, positioning, clarity, you know, things that are really important for picking out where sounds are coming from, being able to hear multiple sounds at the same time, and really just being more aware of what's going on in the game that you're playing and being able to make, you know, critical decisions because of that. And for a $250 headset, the Pro X2 wireless does a really good job of that. Most of what I play right now that really benefits from this is Battlefield 2042 because it's a very chaotic game. There's always a lot going on. And being able to hear, you know, footsteps approaching from your right while you're battling somebody on the left and there are huge explosions going off, you know, just beyond them and there's a jet flying overhead that is crucial to, you know, be able to actually you know, take over some zones or when playing Rush, which is my one of my favorite game modes to play on here. And this headset was absolutely great for that. I felt like I was easily able to pick out on the different directions of, you know, teammates audio cues, enemy footsteps, enemy gunfire and explosions and really be able to, you know, take in what all was happening on the battlefield and make good decisions because of that. And that clarity and positioning also translate great into music as well. Being able to pick out different instruments, you know, just makes the whole listening experience sound so so much better and these drivers this headset is also really good for that cluttered tracks like missed by protest the hero which is one of my favorite tracks to listen to headsets on to you know really get an idea of what it can do as far as imaging and positioning um, I was able to really easily pick out everything on here you know guitars were very easily separated left and right you could hear those different lines moving very easily um, really impressed with what this could do. And moving back to gaming, you know, did this headset like completely change my game style and, you know, double my KDR? You know, no, but it did sound very good when I was using it and I felt like I was able to pick out sounds a little bit easier. This headset just sounds downright great for gaming. And within Logitech's G-Hub are controls to adjust the EQ of the Pro X2 wireless. For me, tuning the EQ was essential to getting the headset how I liked it. There are a few presets like bass boost, communications, flat, FPS, and MOBA, but none of those were quite what I wanted. And this is one area where the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, the recently redesigned 2023 edition might have an upper hand because they have those custom tuned EQ profiles for specific games, you know, made in collaboration with pro gamers from those certain games. And so I do think that was a pretty valuable tool when it came to actually tweaking the EQ and getting the best sound for esports out of that headset. I would love to see something like that, you know, through the G Hub app for the Logitech headset. And in there, you can see that there is a place to browse other custom profiles or presets. Unfortunately, there aren't any results right now in there to pull up, uh, you know, other people's custom uh, EQ profiles, but hopefully that becomes populated as this headset's out for a little bit and we can see something that are, you know, some better tuned profiles that are specifically made for certain games. A couple of other things to touch on. This does support surround sound, but I didn't spend any time listening to it because as soon as I turned it on and listened to music, uh, it completely changed the sound and I couldn't stand it. So, you know, most of these like spatial audio and surround sound modes, there have only been a couple that I've ever really cared for and, you know, even few that I've actually used more than just, you know, for a few minutes because it changes the sound so much. Um, so for me, that would definitely not be something that I would use, but this does support it if that's something you're interested in. All right, and here we are testing the microphone and we are within the Logitech G-Hub app.
There are quite a few controls in here thanks to the Blue Voice software. And so you can see we have input gain, master output level. And there's even a place to uh, basically you can record a little snippet of your voice and then you can play that back and you can make changes to it to see how they actually affect the sound of your voice. So that's a really nice way to dial in all of the effects on here and see what they're actually doing. Down here on the bottom, we have equalizer with a high pass, which we do have enabled. But then we also have the EQ. And so here's what it sounds like with EQ turned off. And here's what it is with EQ turned on. And of course, you can, you know, completely adjust that and change it if you want to. Um, but you know, there are lots of different uh, presets in here you can play with as well. So looking over here on the left, custom presets, uh, we have the broadcaster copy one, which is what I had. We have other controls. You know, we have AM, we have bass boost, broadcaster one, broadcaster two, classic radio. FM, warm and vintage, you know, lots of different options here to change it up. Go back to the one that I had it on to begin with. And then if we go over next to equalizer, there is signal cleanup. So here there are lots of controls like noise reduction, a noise gate, compressor, limiter, de-popper, and de-esser. So some nice features in here, you know, if you're not recording in the greatest of environments, this is a nice way to be able to kind of dial in that sound a little bit better. Logitech also has quite a few different effects in here. If you want to pop some of these on, most of them are pretty obnoxious in my opinion. So uh, I'm not really going to use those. Uh, I guess we can turn on. One or two, this is the demon effect. Uh, we have a high pitch effect. A low pitch effect. So hopefully you get an idea there of, you know, what all, all these different things can do in the effects panel. But as far as what you can do with the microphone, there's quite a bit of control here, which is good to see. So when it comes down to it, the Logitech Pro X2 Wireless is a great gaming headset. It nails comfort, has a good microphone, has a lot of EQ customizability, and has a lot of clarity and detail for competitive gaming and picking out audio cues. The recent Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 from Razer is more affordable at $200, but I do think that the Logitech takes the cake when it comes to just overall sound quality and clarity and the ability to actually, you know, pick out sounds on the field. All right, well, that's gonna do it for our review of the Logitech Pro X2 Wireless. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I will link to the review of the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023, as well as our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.